What about the parapsychology then? Now, um, that's such an interesting development. I don't know how many of you know about the history of um, the paranormal. If you go back to tribal people, um, they'll say to you, the world is alive. Okay. That the trees are alive, that the rocks are alive, to different stages of consciousness to us. When the scientific revolutions began, people were predicting that we'd know everything about, I think, I think it was Lord Rutherford said in the 19th century, in 10 years we're going to know everything there is to know. Mm. Along came a little guy called Albert Einstein. And he said, no, it's not like that. Uh, everything is relative. And he developed a theory, if you like, and that, as that continued on from Einstein, that Heisenberg's principle, that every electron in the universe knows where every other electron is. Now, the big debate is, we are quantum figures as well. We interpret things in different ways. And scientific rationality broke down. In the middle of the 19th century, there was a madam, there was a woman called Madame Blavatsky, who set up uh, the Theosophical Society. And she was convinced she met the masters, as she called them, in Hyde Park. And we might giggle a bit about that. But she began the study of the supernatural and the growth of the spiritualist movement that occurred in the 19th century. People like Keir Hardy, who was the founder of the Labour Party, was a convinced spiritualist because he believed in the next world everything would be shared in common, which is quite interesting. And um, parapsychology has grown steadily from that point. As the big religions have declined, mm or not became as solid, or people haven't believed as much. People have worked hard at trying to make sense of the world. And parapsychology is one of those responses. How do these unknown things happen? Why does it happen? We have to keep a very rigid understanding. In science, we try and say, if something happens by chance, how do we prove it? Good statistical tests. Yeah. Yeah. What we're interested in in parapsychology is when we reject 80% of the cases, but it's those 20% of cases that you can't explain yeah. that are really fascinating. And you have to eliminate so many things that the person's schizophrenic, they've got a psychosis, that it's not a trick, that there are, you have to look for all other possible explanations, which is where you guys come in with your equipment. If you can say there is no logical explanation for this, then um, but that's something worth investigating. In the, in the in, in Victorian age, we nobody worried about death. Today, we worry about death. Yeah. It's distant. Yes. Thank you for thank you. We talk about shares. sex, but we deny death. Yeah. In the Victorian age, yeah. it was the reverse. So it's br brushed under the carpet. Yes, yeah. brushed under the carpet. And what is interesting about parapsychology is we ask questions: Do we go on? Uh, why do we go on? And what evidence is there? And this is where it becomes truly fascinating. My late father was a building estimator. He was ultimately rational. Six months before he died, he had a near-death experience. And I went to visit him in hospital. It was 1983. He said to me, for God's sake, he said, don't tell your mother this, but this is the sort of thing that you're interested in. He said, I dreamt. I was walking through a forest in Greece, and I came to a hunting lodge. And there were all the old Greek gods and goddesses. And they said, you're not wanted here, Keith. Go back. He said, of course, they didn't take another. Six months later, off he went. Yes. But he was brought up as a conventional Anglican who secretly read ancient mythology. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. And it's interesting that at that moment of near death, mm. it wasn't the view of the established church that came through. It was his own belief system. Yes. So that's why I think you guys are very good, because you're helping people make sense and develop their own abilities. Yeah. Yeah. That's where parapsychology comes in. So, uh, and yeah. it's such a vast range of subjects. It is, because like you said, everyone's got their own interpretations yes. about, about, uh, yes. what, about the paranormal. Yes. And, uh, everyone believes in what they believe in. You know? and, uh, I, I firmly believe in uh, regression. And I believe that uh, yes. there is an afterlife. Oh, yes. And there are many, many other afterlives. That's why when people do regression therapy mm -hmm. on other people, that they pick things up from previous That's lives right. which, they, which they've which they, which they have if, I mean, there's a lot of young children who mm -hmm. have memories, and they say when they live with their other family, uh, and we say, don't silly little Johnny, shut up. 
plenty of good stories about that um, from friends where they swear that um, you know, say stuff like that and they say, well, you're not my, you're, you're my mum, but I'm, then my other mum, that type of thing. So, but it's quite young though, that yes, is that. Yes, though, yes. It? And so it's almost like where they say, well, they have an imaginary friend to an eye, we can't see the naked eye, but then to that other child, they can still see other things. So the experience goes, whatever people wish to address them as in this day and age. I mean, what you said about past, about, about previous lives is quite interesting because if you think about it, tribal people see the seasons, they see the seasons go round, mm, and they yes. see the, the plants grow up again, and they see the trees grow up again, and they see the animals return. Now, it seems to me perfectly logical that, um, that you could develop a um, model that that's why we come back. That's, you know, I can't understand myself, and I have a to find anybody here. Um, why on earth would we, in conventional religious sense, be sent to hell for eternity, or heaven for eternity, for only 70 years of these doings? <laughs> you know? Oh, I yes. like the Eastern idea, yeah. that we work it out ourselves. Yeah? Where, if you like, finding our way to some form of other understanding, making sense of it. And I think that's really comforting. It's all up to us, guys, you know? Yes, yes. We work it out where you mess it up. You have to do it again. Or something like that. And allude to repetition. Or, or, to the or the classic states of realisation of karma. Once you realise that, then you have an understanding. Um, you do get part fight, past life. I remember doing a past life regression with one guy. And he told me he'd been playing football in the 14th century. Now, come on. They don't play football in the 14th century. No, no, no. Yeah. And there is a problem where sometimes you have to be very sceptical. Mm. Because people's memories yeah, yeah, they could can be, be uh, what do you call it, uh, confabulated. Yeah. yeah, you have to be very rigorous on that sort of thing. Absolutely. But there is sufficient. There is a tribe. Uh, there is a group of people in Syria now who are getting shot to pieces called the Druze. It's an Islamic group, yet they believe in past lives. And where you have a culture where the, the, the people tend to believe in it, then the kids don't get put off it. Mm. We tend to not see what we're told not to see. Mm. Controlling that to a degree. So there's all sorts of interesting things. And that's why parapsychology is quite interesting. Modern psychology at the universities tend to take the uh, mick out of uh, parapsychology. But you can't prove anything logically, really. No. You have to just say, what evidence do I have and how valid is that evidence? Yeah, and then in the end, then, uh, show the evidence, if you will, and stand by it. That's right. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, so, um, moving on to the next question then. What do parapsychologists uh, sorry, parapsychologists, sorry, study? What uh, type of things? Well, are? there's a whole range of things. I mean, there's the phenomena of ESP. Yeah. Telepathy. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's quite interesting. I, I once did therapy with a, a, an old man who had jumped out after over Arnhem and his parachute had failed to open. He survived. Mm. But he said that his father at that same time had a picture of him and a vision of him in the front row. So they'd look at phenomena like that. Um, how you know that... You know, do you know when you, when you can find out who's going to ring you, you know who it is? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. Yes. Um, sixth sense that something bad's going to happen that day. Yeah? Mm. Uh, you have a feeling that this is the right thing to do. A gut instinct that cannot be statistically... Proved. You can't scientifically standardise it. Mm. Yeah, you can't make the same experiment. It's something that exists outside yes. of that rationality. Let me give you an example. There's a thing called a black swan. It's not a thing that hangs out on the lake and squawks at you. It's an event that can't be predicted. During the Middle Ages, they said all swans were all white. Then they discovered Australia and they found black swans. Now that's an event that cannot be predicted, that changes everything, and once it's happened, people then start predicting why it happened. Mm. Most of the progress, most of the significant people we meet, most of the jobs we get, are all black swans. They happen without being able to predict them. Yeah. So, s most, most predictions, economic, political, if you just said at the time of 9-11, uh, uh, if people could have looked at that and they'd have built bulletproof 
doors, yeah. the planes, they would have been all right. <laughs> no. Yes, but, but it, you couldn't come. predict it. No. So the events that change things are all black swans. And a lot of parapsychology would look at certain sorts of phenomena. Okay. And that's, that's, that, that's why these things are so interesting. Mm. Um, there was a wonderful series on a few years ago called Sea of Souls, which okay. was about parapsychology department at Edinburgh University. And they, they, they did a popular version. It's wonderful. You can, you can see them on YouTube. They're all there on YouTube. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's really good. Because what happened to our units like that was set up, Arthur Kersler, who was all his life, for the last 10 years, an atheist, had an experience. And he's talking to the original department, so he, he helped set up a, a department, parapsychology. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and most people who become interested in this are people who do an, have an event happen in their lives that they can't explain rationally. They may have been stuck in a particular way of thinking. They just can't explain it. So they try and present it. Right. 